Hi everyone at Touchmark and at Edgewood. Well, I think we are in week number four or five of the quarantine, the social distancing. I'm not sure how many more weeks we have, but I am looking forward to the day when this is over and I can be back with you, seeing you face to face and singing to our God and reading his word. I sure miss all of you. And I think about you and pray for you often. I wanted to ask you a question today. It's a question that I've been asking myself, and it's this What word would you use to describe the ambiance at Touchmark? Or what word would you use to describe the ambiance at Edgewood? Or in my case, what word would I use to describe the ambiance in my home? Is it one of positivity, of happiness, of peace, of joy? Or would you describe the ambiance as low morale, people sad or mad or frustrated, unpeaceful, unjoyful? And then let me ask this second question. Would you say that you're part of the problem or part of the solution if the ambiance is bad? Are you part of the construction team or the demolition team? We had a saying when we were on the mission field in Brazil. My wife and I were missionaries at a Bible school for seven years in Brazil. Two of our kids were born there. And the missionaries had a saying, and it went like this. Missionaries are a lot like fertilizer. You pile them up and things start to stink, but you spread them out and things start to grow. Basically, what that meant was missionaries, even though they're Christians, are far from perfect as you can imagine, the number one reason missionaries leave the field, get this, is because of conflict, internal conflict, conflict with other missionaries. I was thinking during this quarantine thing how easy it is to have conflict with the people that we love the most, especially for many of us when we're contained in this small area. For many of us, we can't go outside of Edgewood or Touchmark or we're around our families a lot more than usual. And so there's the potential for conflict. I've been thinking a lot about the words that I say. Have you heard that saying, sticks and stones will break my bones? But words will never hurt me? Well, we all know that that's not true. Words not only hurt, but the words we say, according to God's word, can actually bring about life or death. Take, for instance, Proverbs 18.21. The tongue, God says, has the power of life and death. Or Proverbs 12, 25, anxious hearts are very heavy, but a word of encouragement does wonders. Mark Twain, the great author, once said, I can live a whole month on one compliment. Have you noticed that? Maybe at some point or maybe recently you were so down so discouraged or so depressed, wondering if you could even go on, and God sent someone along who said something that really encouraged you and picked you up. Or maybe it was a letter that you received in the mail from a friend or from a relative, and it really blessed you. Howard Hendricks, this great Bible teacher, he once said, A pat on the back though only six inches removed from a kick in the pants, does wonders for a person. 
And I've noticed that a verbal compliment does far more to motivate me than a sarcastic word. When I receive an affirming word, I'm far, far more likely to reciprocate and do something nice to that person in return. Maybe you've heard the saying, a apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, I think a compliment a day keeps the counselor away. So how have you been speaking to those around you? Here's some thoughts that I've been going over recently as I think about how have my words been to my wife, to my kids during this time of social distancing, of quarantining, of being together in a tight area as a family. A few thoughts. Number one, you know, the best gift that I can give my spouse or my kids or my friends or my neighbors is to have a good relationship with Jesus. And am I working on that relationship? Because my relationship with Jesus is going to affect everything else that I do. I think that's why Jesus said, the first and the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And then the second, which is an outflow of that, is to love your neighbor as yourself. Number two, am I interrupting people? I had a professor in college, and he would be teaching, and sometimes other kids would be talking. And I always remember him saying, don't interrupt. It's rude. Make listening a priority. Number three, how are the nonverbals? Do you know that a lot of what we communicate is communicated non-verbally? Maybe the eye rolls or the sighs or a shoulder shrug. So how are the non-verbals? What are they communicating? Number four, am I complimenting people? You know, another thing that I have found really cheers people up is when you compliment them in the presence of someone else. You say, you know, so-and-so here, they are a great listener, or so-and-so here is a great sower, or a great artist, or so-and-so here, they are an incredible reader. And that really makes you feel warm when you're complimented in the presence of others. And so do we compliment other people in the presence of others? Here's another one. Am I using please and thank you? Just those little words, those little acts of kindness, I think can make a huge difference. You know, when someone brings your meal? Do you thank them for that? That can really make or break their day. Thanking the staff at Edgewood, thanking the staff at Touchmark for all they do. Oh, I know they're getting paid, but still, to say please or to say thank you can really make someone's day. I had a mentor growing up and he once told me the three most powerful words a person can say is i love you those words are profound and are we telling our relatives our kids our grandkids that we love them and finally Here's something maybe not all of us can do, but if you can do, I think this would be a great way of building the ambiance 
in the place. And that's this. Writing a letter to someone to encourage them. You know when you go out and you get the mail or mail's delivered to you at Touchmark or at Edgewood and you receive a letter from someone and you open that letter up and it just blesses you. It makes your heart warm. I think writing a letter can really help with the ambiance in a place, in our city, in our community. Just making a difference in someone's life. Telling them how much you appreciate them. What a great friend they are. Telling a son or a daughter or a grandchild how much you love them. How skilled they are. I want to end with these words. This is from the letter that St. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. And he says this, Each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building other people up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. What great instruction God gives us through his servant, the Apostle Paul. I hope I can do better at putting that into practice. Well, so long. Until next week, I will be praying for you. And have a great and godly week. Amen.